Good evening. Thank you for the kind invitation. I will talk today about the multimodal imaging of uh, retinal inflammation. I would start with a uh, clinical case. This is a case of a 68-year-old female. She came with a history of visual loss in both eyes and photopsia. She was treated with topical steroid with no improvement. On fundus exam, we can see a optic nerve with blurry margin, tortuous vessel, an hypopigmented spot inferiorly, and a blunt macular reflex. The fluorescent angiography revealed early um, hyperfluorescence um, due to window defects and late leakage from the disc and cystoid macular edema. ICGA revealed hypofluorescent spot in the mid-periphery. The OCT showed macular thickening with cyst, intraretinal cyst and a thick featureless choroid. The patient underwent systemic investigation, including CBC with differential, ESR. She also underwent syphilis screening because all the patients with uh, ocular inflammation must undergo syphilis screening, TB, sarcoidosis, and HLA-A29. The patient came out positive for HLA-A29 and was diagnosed with birchard chorea retinopathy and treated with systemic immunosuppression. But if we go back to the color fundus, I want you to focus on three main features that are the main topic of my talks. The vasculitis, the retinal spot, and the macular fluid. So let's start talking about the vasculitis. So when you have a patient with vasculitis, the first question you may answer is, it is an arterial vasculitis or a vein vasculitis? If it is an arterial vasculitis, as in this patient, the first uh, diagnosis that you must ex exclude is an infectious disease, and especially a viral infectious disease. This is a patient with the CNV retinitis in an HIV positive patient with a classic pizza-like uh, presentation. Another example is this focal uh, retinitis that's associated with the retinal whitening. The fluorescent angiography revealed arterial involvement and very ischemic macula, and this is a case of toxoplasmic chorea retinitis. The second etiology that is associated with arterial involvement of vasculitis is autoimmune diseases. This is a red-free imaging of a patient that presented with vitreous cell, and you can see there is a very selective arterial involvement. And the fluorescent angiography revealed marked hypoperfusion of the macula and the retinal periphery. And the patient turned out to have antiphospholipid syndrome. On the other hand, you may have um, a venous vasculitis, so a phlebitis. This is a patient that came with the very marked venous seating, and you can see very clearly from fluorescent angiography and ICG. So this is a case of Bechet disease with very prominent venous uh, involvement. The second question you may ask yourself when you see a patient with vasculitis, if it is a diffuse vasculitis or a focal vasculitis. Diffuse vasculitis, on other, um, in turn, it can, be, it can involve the main retinal vessel, as in this case of Burchard chorea retinopathy, or may involve both the main vessel and the small vessel in the periphery, as in this case of Bechet disease. There are also cases of diffuse vasculitis that may localize mainly in the far periphery, having this leakage in the far periphery with a very peculiar pattern of fern-like vasculitis, as in this case of pars planitis or other causes associated with intermediate uveitis. On the other hand, you may have patients that present with focal vasculitis, as in this patient. If you uh, focalize on the, on, on the vessel, you see that the arterial and the venous involvement is not continuous, but it, there are skip lesion. And this is very typical of sarcoid uveitis. The other thing you uh, must explore when you see a patient with the vasculitis is the grade of perfusion, because some vasculitis can be occlusive. So all the patients with vasculitis must undergo fluorescent angiography or ICG to understand 
the degree of non, of non perfusion. And this is a case of West Nile retin retinopathy. So, m some occlusive vasculitis can be associated with viral infection, as in this case. Other cases of occlusive vasculitis are idiopathic vasculitis. This is a patient with IRVAN that uh, fluorescent angiography revealed the classic aneurysm around the optic disc, but also non perfusion in the macular area. And uh, you must be aware that in these cases of idiopathic vasculitis, as Irvan, the gradient of non-perfusion may be very severe as another case of Irvan, the, where you see the uh, aneurysm on the optic nerve, exudation, ves vessel sclerosis, but very, very severe non-perfusion. The fourth question uh, you must um, analyze when you see a patient with vasculitis is uh, specific features. So sometimes you can, be, you can, you can see uh, diffuse um, vessel uh, sheeting associated with the focus of uh, retinitis and you must think about infectious diseases. For example, a pa this patient has toxoplasmic retinitis or you may see this plaque also in viral retinitis as West Nile. Again, this is another patient that has very typical features, that is this focal involvement of the peripheral arteries associated with leakage of the arterial branches. It is very typical of Susak vasculitis. Finally, you must also aware about cases of pseudovasculitis. So this patient presented with very marked uh, vessel sheeting on fundus examination and there was also vessel leakage on diangiography. However, the OCT revealed the marked uh, subretinal infiltration of this hyperreflective material and this indeed uh, came out to be an, a case of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Another case of pseudovasculitis is lipidic uh, sheeting of the vessel and this is a case of Coats disease in a young boy patient. Finally, another case of pseudovasculitis may be degenerative in origin. So this patient came with a branch retinal occlusion. You see yellow sheeting of an artery that was hyperautofluorescent, and this was a case of art arteriolosclerotic plaque that has been described as associated with branch retinal vein occlusion. So the first take-home message of this presentation is that the vasculitis is a very important diagnostic prognostic and therapeutic role in assessing patients with retinal inflammation. So let's move to the second part of our differential diagnosis. So let's focus on the retinal spots. When you see a patient with retinal spot on fundus examination, the first thing you may think about is the shape of the, these spots. So a patient may present with dots, as in this patient he has very circular uh, dots at the posterior pole, that were hyper autofluorescent and they were uh, associated with outer retinal disruption on unfast reconstruction. And this is a, is a case of classic mutes. Some other patient with retinal spots may present with patches. So this patient presented with patch of hyper autofluorescence in the acute phase that were associated with also patches of hypofluorescent on ICG. And this is a case, uh, this characterized patient with the placoid diseases, as this case of AMPI. Finally, um, some patient, patients may present with plaques. So this is a patient with a yellow plaque on the posterior pole associated with optic disc edema that was hyper autofluorescent and associated with optic disc and vessel leakage. And this is a very pathognomonic manifestation of placoid posterior syphilitic coral retinopathy. Other two examples of patients with retinal inflammation presented with plaque is a, a plaque that is um, associated with marked hypofluorescence on both fluorescent angiography and ICG. And this is very typical of persistent plicot maculopathy. Finally, instead of the macula, you may see similar plaques around the optic disc that have very typical serpiginous uh, shape and features. And this is indeed a case of serpiginous chor choroiditis.
The second uh, element you may uh, focus on when you analyze retinal spot is the level of inflammation. Indeed, you, uh, retinal inflammation may be localized mainly in the inner retina, in the outer retina, or in the choroid. So this is a patient that presented with discrete yellow spot in the macula. And on fluorescent angiography, he presented with hypofluorescent spot that were hypofluorescent as well on ICG. This may look like placoid diseases as the patient we saw before. However, when we perform the OCT, we see hyperreflective material that is present in the choroid, intraretinal, and indeed or, or, uh, already in the vitreous. So this is a case of candida, candida cord retinitis that has already become an endophthalmitis. And in this case, you may want to call your vitreoretinal retinal surgeon. On the other hand, there are some uh, retinal spot and retinal inflammation that are characterized by marked uh, outer retinal inflammation. This is the patient I, I show you before with syphilitic placoid uh, choral retinopathy and there is marked disruption of the outer retina. So the retina is fine, the choroid is fine, but there is uh, absence and irregularities of the ellipsoid zone and the external limiting membrane that nicely regressed with antibiotic treatment. Some inflammation may be associated with the choroid uh, inflammation and involvement. So this is another case of a patient presented with yellow deep retinal uh, choroidal spot that were hypofluorescent on ICG and this may resemble the, the, the case of mutes I showed you before. However, the OCT help us um, understanding and showing a diffuse choroidal thickening with hyporeflective lesion in the choroid. And this led to the diagnosis of benign choroidal lymphoid diseases. This is a, a, a benign proliferation of lymphoid tissue that belongs to the spectrum of choroidal lymphoma. Another element that I want to show you about the retinal spot is the associated features. So this patient presented with hypoautofluorescent spot in the, in the macula that were hypofluorescent on ICG. However, they were uh, surrounded by a halo of uh, hyperautofluorescent that was hypofluorescent on ICG and uh, the OCT showed hyperreflective inflammatory material between the Brooke membrane and the retinal pigment epithelium, so uh, likely an inflammatory material, and as, that was associated with outer retinal disruption. So indeed this is a case of peak punctate inner choroidopathy associated with the mutes-like reaction due, the, due to the hyperautofluorescence and the retinal dot and spot on ICG. The other associated feature you may want to consider is the history of the patient. So this is another patient with, that presented with the yellow spot in the choroid, marked outer retinal and RP atrophy on autofluorescence, but the history of the patient was very important because this patient underwent multiple surgery in, the, in one eye and the inflammation was in the fellow eye and this led to the diagnosis of sympathetic ophthalmia. So the second take-home message of this presentation is that the location, the natural history, and the multimodal imaging features of the retinal spot may be also very useful when you are trying to narrow the differential diagnosis of retinal inflammation. And now let's move to the third part of this talk, that is about the fluid. So patients with retinal inflammation most often present with intraretinal fluid. So usually uh, having a cystoid uh, configuration or neurosensory detachment. And this is associated with the leakage, late leakage in the macula on fluorescent angiography. So indeed this is a case of Whipple disease. This is another patient with diffuse vasculitis. You can see here the fern-like pattern I showed you before. And the OCT revealed a nice cystoid macular edema that regressed with the anti-inflammatory treatment. However, a subset of patients with retinal inflammation may be associated with subretinal fluid. 
This patient presented with uh, dot hyperfluorescent on FFA and late pooling on fluorescent angiography. And the OCT revealed a very thick featureless choroid, wavy choroid with multiple uh, pockets of subretinal fluid, and this is a case of Voco Yanagi Arada. However, I want you to show a particular case of Voco Yanagi Arada. This is another patient with the same diagnosis. The ICG showed the hypofluorescent spot uh, secondary to the choroiditis, but then the pooling in the macula has very uh, strange, I may say, hyporeflective ring surrounding the, the central hyperfluorescence. So indeed, the OCT revealed a very um, peculiar uh, pattern of accumulation of fluid that was between the ellipsoid zone that remained attached to the RPE and the external limiting membrane. And this pattern of fluid has been called bacillary detachment. So we don't know yet where there is the splitting exactly, but uh, we know that there is the splitting at the level of the Extra, uh, the ellipsoid zone. Okay. And indeed, we don't know where exactly is the splitting. Is between the outer segment and the inner segment, or is between the meoid or ellipsoid segment? Next slide. So the bacillary detachment is a very uh, peculiar uh, form of uh, um, retinal inflammation, but it is highly aspecific. So it, it may be associated with different form of uh, uh, ocular inflammation. This is a case, for example, of posterior scleritis with multiple pockets of bacillary detachment uh, over the fovea and temporary to the fovea. It can be also associated with infectious disease. This is a case of reti focal retinitis that was associated with next, marked hypoperfusion and arterial involvement of the vasculitis uh, close to the macula, but OC the OCT revealed the splitting of the ellipsoid zone that remain attached to the RPE and the fluid accumulating between the ellipsoid zone and the external limiting membrane. Finally, it can be also associated with the other disease, with disease other than uh, typical uveitis. So this is a patient with AMD, with type 1 macular neovascularization that underwent multiple injection and then PDT. And the day after, he presented with this uh, picture of retinal inflammation and it is, uh, it is a uh, exudative reaction to the photodynamic therapy. So the third take home message is that the intraretinal, the subretinal, but also the bacillary detachment are markers of active inflammation and uh, are the main cause of reduced visual acuity in patients with inflammation. So in conclusion, the multimodal Im imaging analysis of the retinal features when you have a patient with an inflammatory disease and namely the vasculitis the spot and the fluid may give you precious information about the differential diagnosis, the monitoring of the patient and the response to treatment. Thank you.